morning, my fellow Tibetans and the support supporters that have gathered here today. My name is Lobsang Namru, a.k.a. Lobsang Tsiri. Today we gather here not to commemorate an event in the annals of Tibetan history, be it ancient or modern. Today we gather, no, today we do not gather here to commemorate an important occasion. Today we gather to reaffirm our love and faith in the moral leadership of His Holiness the Dalai Lama. Today, we gather to send a strong message that we love you, His Holiness, we love you in this and many future lives to come. The Dalai Lama does not belong to Tibetans alone, nor does the Dalai Lama belong to Buddhists alone. The Dalai Lama belongs to the 8 billion human beings that dwell on this planet Earth. He is a global icon of peace, love and compassion. He is a bridge that unites the humanity as common brotherhood and sisterhood. He often says, I quote, On the most fundamental level, we are same human beings. Unquote. What could be more truer than that? Experience teaches us that when we are united as shared human beings, there is peace and harmony. Be it on the most fundamental level of human family or on the broader level of national or transnational unity. The Dalai Lama is the comfort to the poor and sick, serenity to the old, and hope to the young. His message of love and compassion transcends all ethnicities, religious faiths, and all other denominations that tend to divide, divide us. The Dalai Lama breathe, eat, sleeps for the oneness of humanity. For his tireless efforts to bring bring disarmament and peace to this world, he was awarded the Nobel Peace Prize on December 10, 1989, the most prestigious peace award. On September 27, 2006, the United States Congress passed an act to award the Congressional Gold Medal to His Holiness the Dalai Lama. The preamble of that Congressional Act reads, I quote, to award a Congressional Gold Medal to Tenzin Gyatso, the 14th Dalai Lama, in recognition of his many enduring and outstanding contributions to peace, nonviolence, human rights, and religious understanding. And on October 17, 2007, in the glittering ceremony in the United States Capitol's Emancipation Hall, the Dalai Lama received the Congressional Gold Medal. I will never forget that day because I will watch it live just like every one of you on television. As some of you know, I have two children. One soon to be 20 year old daughter and another a 15 year old boy. Me and my wife are proud to say that both our children slept with me or my wife at bedtimes until they turned 13. This is what my Tibetan culture taught me how to raise my children. This is what my Rinpoche friend in Minneapolis once told me that in his nomadic region in Amko province in northeastern Tibet, three to four generations of Tibetans, Tibetans sleep in the same tent sandwiched against each other. Modern day scientific research has established that this tactile interaction, the skin to skin touch between parents and children on the most fundamental and cellular level creates a lifelong bond and, and implants seeds of security, love, compassion in children's brain. Well, some cultures or some perverted minds may say, I am a pedophile, a, a child molester sleeping with my 12 year old son or daughter. And I say to you or them, you are sick, perverted, and you 
you need treatment. Love does not need sex. Likewise, when I read recently an innocent interaction between an Indian boy and the 87-year-old Dalai Lama that has been misconstrued as sexual, for a moment my heart sank and shattered into a thousand pieces to see how corrupted our minds have become. These few perverts fail to see the full context of the situation. That mundane and innocent interaction happened under the spotlight of the boy's parents, media personnel taking pictures, and Dalai Lama's own security and staff, and that too on one broad daylight. So this headline story of the Dalai Lama and the boy is one such case of modern day media's obsession with sex, money and drugs. This also reflects our sorry state of modern day internet driven citizen journalism where truth and integrity does not matter. Mind you, my fellow Tibetans and friends, American friends, the Chinese government and its million minions are behind this that first Twitter feed that doctored, manipulated image of an Indian boy and the Dalai Lama that led to this. I too, like the rest of you, felt sad and heartbroken when a precious one is judged, vilified and smeared by some people out of their own self-promotion agendas. Remember, it is not the first time, nor will it be the last, the internet trolls under the payroll of the Communist Party of China will continue to look for any opportunity to vilify the Dalai Lama. We must be vigilant and never play into the hands of the Communist Party of China. The best thing we can do is never share the negative stories. Because when we do not share, the negative stories die their own death in anonymity. On the contrary, when we share the negative stories, we are amplifying the negative stories of the internet trolls into million views. What happens is that when we uh, then happens is that we are playing right into the hands of the grand scheme of the Chinese trolls, which is to divide and rule the Tibetans. In, con in conclusion, my fellow Tibetans, gold is a gold. Gold by any other name is still a gold. I for am, am not worried much. Our Dalai Lama is unscathed and will always be. After all, he is my moral compass, a sailor to navigate my life's journey, a refuge in this and my many future lives to come. He is my guru. Without him, I have no ground to stand on. So is he yours too. In this troubled time, let us all share and show our strength and unity. And pray we must that may His Holiness the Dalai Lama live forever in our hearts. May the beer can continue to shine light to our hapless souls. Thank you, Kujishe.